Hey, there we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Welcome back to my live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today, today is, what day is today? Today is June 6th, 2019, and we're going to write a little bit of code today. How's it going there, chat room? I've got my, yeah, I've got the reflection from the green there. I've got my Overwatch hat on. I've got my uh, uh, Reaper uh, t-shirt on tonight. Overwatch League returns. Oh my gosh. I am so thrilled. Uh, if you've been watching, you know I'm a big fan of the Overwatch League. Um, and uh, they're going to get back into it. I'm always pulling for my my Philadelphia Fusion. I'm at, I'm torn a little bit here. Uh, Stelzy, thanks so much for the resub. Steel eight months. Just resubscribed for eight months. Yeah, for eight months. Thank you so, so much. Uh, that'll keep you in a blue hat. Thank you so much for that. And we'll make a donation to Veterans Who Could. And I also want to thank McNerdius for the resub. Two months out there. One month away from getting a red hat badge. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, with all of our cheers, all of our subs, we're making donations. This is the last month we're going to be making donations. Oh, my gosh. Moss 2005 just resubscribed for 12 months. One year with Moss. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. And Ancient Coder. Ancient Coder just resubscribed for 10 months. 10 months, OMG. Good evening, peeps. Hey, good evening. As as you know, every sub, every cheer, we're going to make a donation. And this is the last month that we're tallying up for Veterans Who Code. Thank you so much, everybody, for that. I really appreciate it. Excuse me. And right now, actually, Twitch is running a, a special... Uh, they're running a, a fundraiser. If you cheer 200 bits or more, um, you'll get some pride emotes. Um, and they'll make a donation. I think it's 10 cents on every 100 bits. They'll make a donation to uh, to the Trevor Project uh, during the pride month this month. Um, so get those rainbow emotes. Uh, cheer 200 bits. And it'll share those with other folks in the chat room as well. I am not myself. Good to see you. Thanks so much. We're going to recap. We're going to talk about how we solved our little problem there that we hit with authentication the other day. J just to wrap up, I'm at I'm kind of at a quandary here. Um, the Overwatch League finals are in Philadelphia this year. I'm like, fantastic. I'm going to get to see this, and it's going to be in my home arena. And it, at Wells Fargo Center, right, the big hockey arena, basketball arena, downtown Philadelphia, it's the same day as the last day of TwitchCon. So either I leave TwitchCon early or I don't get to see the Overwatch League finals and I'm leaning towards not getting to see the finals. Hey, Kasukin, thank you for the kind words there. I hope you had a great stream because our friend Kasukin was hosting a, a, an online event based in Italy. Um, thanks so much. Kasukin is, of course, another one of the live coders. Uh, writing code sometimes on in English, sometimes in Italian, and uh, I hope you check out his stream as well. All right, um, I gotta get I gotta get some G Fuel loaded up here. Pardon me for a second while I do this. I, I need to figure out some G Fuel prep music. Right, it, that feels like a 150 attendees. Oh, that's great, Kasukin. That's phenomenal. Um, I need like David Letterman. It used to have like, hey Paul, can you play some? Can you play some G Fuel mixing music? I, I need something like that. Um, I'm going to make some pink lemonade today. Uh, how's it going there? You vote for gin and juice. I don't, that's a fine idea at this time of the evening. But uh, not my deal. I don't like to uh, I don't like to drink and, drink and stream. Is that a thing? It is a thing, actually. Our friend Junie Von Esch occasionally does that. Um, and, of course, uh, Robert Tables enjoys a Coors Light occasionally while he's streaming um let me get some music playing here in the background and let's talk about what we're going to be working on today what we're going to be getting into um i like where's orange orange for my philadelphia fusion we're going to play orange this is music to go by from our friend mr carl franklin uh it's been designed it's been engineered to get you in the groove to get you focused on whatever task it is that you might be working on whether it's writing code doing homework chores around the house lawn work I hate working on the lawn um check it out mtcb.pwop.com I've got that green light where is it it's over here Let's see if we can cut that out a little bit there we go uh 
mtcb.pwop.com. You can get all 19 songs for less than 40 bucks. Check it out. And you can also uh, execute exclamation point music in the chat room. Just like that. And you'll get a link to it. Let Carl know you enjoy his music. It is tremendous stuff. And we listen to it here in the background while we're writing code. Thanks so much, Carl, for letting us listen to your music while we write some code together. All right. I got some some great photos uh, last night from MVP Summit, the Microsoft MVP Summit. Just like this one. Um, pictures of me speaking on stage. I don't, I don't get a lot of pictures that are that good quality of me speaking on stage, let alone me speaking on stage. Let's start there. I think the last picture I have of me speaking on stage was when I was in Germany uh, last year. Lucky number seven. Hey, Andy. Thanks so much for the raid. Oh, look at that. Here they come. Thank you very, very much for that kind raid. We're going to... I should... Exclamation point. Defend ourselves from this. Um, I need to do like a ra proper raid defense video. And, and Fierce Kittens would mock me for not having one. Um... Welcome in, Raiders. Th hey, good evening, Andy. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. My name is Jeff Fritz, and we're going to write a little code tonight. We're going to be doing some ASP.NET Core and Blazor this evening. I uh, I hope you stick around and, and enjoy with us. I, I really appreciate the raid. What were you working on tonight, uh, lucky number seven? Yeah, look at the defense. Look at the shield on that bot. It's mighty impressive. So yeah, this is I. There's not a lot of pictures of me uh, speaking on stage. I've I'm slowly getting out of the speaking game. Um, turns out not a lot of I, I've been running into issues where not a lot of conferences are taking me, um, and they're scheduled at times that aren't that aren't working out with my schedule. So I'm having a real hard time doing um, in-person uh, events. So, I, uh, literally, I have next week at Dev Intersection, and then the next one that I'll have after that probably be the next Dev Intersection in Vegas, only because I get to I get to set the schedule. Whether or not I speak at Ignite is up in the air. Um, we'll see if they if they let me submit. I was the top speaker at Ignite last year, and I've been kind of blackballed in the year since. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but hey. Um, I'm not rated based on how many times I speak, so it doesn't really bother me. But I know folks want to see me speaking at events. We'll see about that. The once about stop streaming, where for lucky number seven. Hey, Danny Camps, good to see you. Uh, you got accepted to Music City Code. Fantastic. I am not myself. Best of luck to you in Nashville. Yeah, the uh, Caribbean Developers Conference. We've already got a bunch of Microsoft folks engaged to be there. I can't speak there also. You we can only send about three people to that event and I'm not going to be one of those. So yeah, there's, there's a real, uh, we have a real problem with uh, folks in the developer division. And we saw this with NDC London. Um, there were 17 people from Microsoft there. 17. That's a lot. That's too many. So, we need to balance the number of folks that we send to different events. Um, so, if it's not a Microsoft event, we can't be sending that many people. Um, we have a bunch of people going to Dev Intersection, but uh, we're, we're cutting back. You got so confused. Trying to finish off a bit more of your information extension. Nice. Stream was mainly view and getting Twitch webhook service completed. Twitch has a great webhook service. I, I don't know if uh, folks see it that much. Um, it's great because it will it will activate features for you. Like you can you can be notified when somebody's stream starts. Uh, there we go. Pups up. So you can actually receive a webhook, right? So you can subscribe to it. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Here are the topics that you can subscribe to: bits, bit badge, noti bit badge notifications. If somebody subscribes to a channel, there's also start and stop that you can subscribe to, and you'll receive information about that. There you go. Uh, ping and pong. Where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Is it down here in the new Twitch? There it is. The webhooks. 
These are the ones I was thinking of, and I'm sure these are the ones that you're doing. So you set up a subscription. Where are they? Show me the list. Uh huh. Uh, user follows. Where's the list of topics? There it is. User follows. If the stream changed, if the user changes information in their profile, information about game analytics and your extension analytics. Really cool stuff. And Twitch will send you this information. So you can actually receive notification when a stream comes online and then attach. I said it. I said it. And then? Attach to that stream and do something about it. So that's kind of cool. In this photo, you look like a life coach. Um, kind of. Kind of. There's uh, two other photos here, right? I, the big thing for me is I lost weight. I'm looking at this and going, oh my gosh, I lost weight. So, thank you for the follow, Claudio Sanchez. And John Adali, or is it John A. Dali? Thanks so much for the follow. We're trying to reach... A follower goal here if we get this number our follower count to 8,000 before September 15th I'll dye my beard rainbow for TwitchCon I know let me know uh, tell your friends tell your families tell your pets sign up for twitch drop us a follow there's all kinds of great stuff going on here um, and uh, I hope you have a good time I'm I know uh, I know we're having a good time so yeah, nowhere without the hat, absolutely. And I'm waiting to see if Junie joins us here because I promised her I'd wear a special hat tonight just as a salute to her, and I don't see her here yet. So I'm not going to put it on until she actually gets here um, because I know, I know she's around tonight. I'm not putting on that hat. I, I'm going to tweet this. I promised... I'm just going to stir the pot here until I see her in chat. And of course, that'll pop up there in... Come on, it'll pop up in Twitch chat from Stream Elements, there it is. Absolutely, nowhere without the hat, always got a hat. The hat's become my thing. Um, especially the baseball caps, right? And the custom baseball caps, no less. Our friends that made donations during our St. Jude drive should be receiving their... their uh, their hats for their donation tomorrow we'll see um okay so that's the pictures that i, I was like wow that, that actually looks pretty good i was impressed with myself go figure all right last time we were working on authentication with uh with bobby johnson from auth zero uh he won our bits for bytes for february he was the high cheerer that month, so uh, as a reward for being the top cheerer of the month, um, he was invited to do pair programming with me, and we were working on connecting Twitch to our Pixel Bot. This is the application that we, we've been working on off and on for the last month or so, where we're using the actor model with ASP.NET Core to be able to build a very scalable Twitch bot. We're not going to finish working on the. We're not going to work on this, the rest of today. But I want to wrap up where we left off last time, because we hit this really weird scenario that whenever you clicked login, from the application, we got this 403 error and we didn't quite understand it. Gwiz70, thank you for the follow. Oh, the follow train is strong tonight. Thank you, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you in the chat room, Gwiz. Um. So we weren't quite sure why we were getting this error. It was a weird error. There was nothing being reported with it. And um, Bobby went back and talked to the folks at Auth0 and pulled it apart and checked to make sure everything. Here's what's going on. From this extension, it was configured to use, and I, I know Lucky Number 7 is going to appreciate this, configured to use the Kraken, or version 3 version of Twitch's API. They're... They're gently nudging people, forcing them um, over to version 5. So when you look at the extension, see that? I removed the client secret so I could show this screen. I set it up right, huh? See what I did there? Um, yes, it's getting from that Kraken endpoint, and the endpoint is still available. Kraken slash user. See it right here? Um, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, make that bigger. The accept is now a VND 
Twitch TV V5 uh, mime type. See it there on line five? That change is all the difference. We It was in the default configuration with this, excepting V3. Yeah, I know, Haxatrax. I know, I, I kind of feel the same way. That they're, they're removing endpoints, and it's... It, it's um, making it a little bit more difficult to do cool things with Twitch. So, um, once we change this over to V5 here, it just started working. So, uh, that's something that the OAuth folks have taken. They're going to make this a little bit easier for folks to start up and get a great integration process working so that, so that folks can use twitch to log in so if I scroll down here and I click try it means my connection works you're gonna receive my nickname yep my nickname is Jeffrey T Fritz my name is actually C sharp Fritz and there's the information about my gravatar right so if I copy that out paste that into a new browser window look at that hair okay fine um, and the last time it was updated. Just now. So, cool. That's easy. Uh, V5 is going in the future and Helix is the new one. Yeah, V5 is deprecated. It's So there's another change that's going to need to happen here. This is one of the challenges with integrating with a third-party provider and why you want to use a, a all-in-one service like Auth0 that's able to maintain those connections for you, keep that up to date. So you don't have to update your configuration. You just keep working with Auth0 and they deal with Twitch appropriately for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, Ryan Roberts, uh, am I self-taught or went to, now Ryan, I saw you last night on, I saw you Tuesday night on Fierce Kitten stream asking these same questions. Um, I'm both, I went to university I and I, graduated with a degree in uh, management sciences and information systems but everything that you will see me do tonight I taught myself and I think that's something that we as developers need to make sure uh, you do being a developer doesn't mean that you went to university you went to school you went to a boot camp and you're done learning you're never done learning in this industry you're going to need to invest and spend time learning so that you can maintain your career. Thank you for the follow, Ryan. Um, yes, you're going to... A university degree will get you the concepts. You're going to need to spend time learning and maintaining those concepts as the new technologies come because there is one constant in this industry. Change. It, everything is constantly changing. Hey, President Not Sure. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. President Not Sure says, uh, word. Woo! No, word, not woo. Word. All right. We'll figure that out. Hey, SMAP. You can't treat computer science as liberal arts. Um, you were asking these same questions the other night, Ryan. Um... Being a developer just means you are too stubborn to stop finding out how things work. Eh, a little bit. Uh, Barnyard Man, good evening. And Zoltra Lord is here. Hello, good to see you. So that's where we left off. It turned out we didn't have to change any of our code in this project. It's wired up properly to that Auth0 endpoint. I'm going to be able to continue working on this. I'll make some advancements in it. I'll come back and give a recap along the way. But doing more streams about building technology for streams is um, getting a little boring and I'll, I'll come back to it a little bit later. Trying to find some courses to register. Okay. A university that allows HR goons to check off that box. Ooh, yeah, Threnen. It's not a good thing at all. Alright. Um, so that's where we left off with the pixel bot. I'm going to go back and I want to work on our resource management application which is right here so this is where we're building an application 
that's going to allow you to manage the availability of folks that are um, volunteers, scheduling them appropriately for work. And in particular, I'm targeting a use case. You're really not going to let me highlight that, are you? Yeah, for this organization, Sebastian Riding Associates. Um, okay, so what we're doing here, let me change into my dev branch. Right, we've got a schedule. We've got some schedule testing going on here. Let me make sure that I have all the latest versions of this downloaded and ready to go here and we will um, is it this yeah there it is um, yep fantastic uh, no we're gonna use Visual Studio 2019 uh, the preview is still it's 16.2 preview 1 I believe it is this is the next the next version of Visual Studio that you're going to get a release for. And yeah, that's it right there, right? Come here. Thank you. Um, there's still important computer science being done at universities all over the world. We need folks who can build the next kind of database or AI or ML. Yes, I agree. Now, why is it telling me this? Yeah, I want to open it. I just get cloned it. Wait a sec. That's not what I clicked. Why is it opening that project? Yeah. Strange things are afoot. And um, I was recording a video earlier today, so that's why I'm on the light theme here. Uh, let's go back into this. Source. Resource management. Don't say that. And there we go. Let's change my theme. I've gone too far. Uh, theme. There we go. And we want the dark theme. Um, if you're interested in deep learning and have the resources, go get that CS degree. Yes, absolutely. However, the number of people that are needed to build uh, that next database, that next, uh, yeah, that next database, not as high. AI and ML, we need a lot of folks to, to get into that and, and make it easier for the, uh, for the muggles, for the folks who aren't studied in those topics. Need to make that easier for other folks to be able to use. I do like the control Q keybind. Yeah. And it's it feels weird that it didn't uh, it didn't light up right away for me, right? I, I hit control Q and started typing. It's like I got in there before it started to. Talking about the light theme, even Apple realized the importance of the dark theme. I oh, I got to do this. Can I do this for a second? Hang on. Let me Behold the dark theme. Right? Or maybe if I did it like this, maybe. I don't think that worked. I don't think that worked at all. Nothing. I know. Rats. Hmm. I did. I was trying to mute it so that I didn't hear it because when I hear it, there's like a half second delay and it feels weird. Hmm. House be such. Thank you for the sub. Be such just resubscribed for two months. Thanks so much for that. Uh, you're welcome, Sync Stuff. Um, all right, I'm not going to try that the thing again. Let's moving on. I, yes, it's shameful that it didn't work. Vader has laryngitis, right? <sighs> the problem I have with the dark theme is it changes up my lighting here. You know? You know what I mean? 
Um, so let's see here. Let's go. Where did we leave? Where did we leave off? We were adding pages so that we could do authentication is where we were over here. Funny. We were at the almost the exact same place. Um, let me see what happens when I start this. And we'll figure out where we can jump in and continue. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Get started. Let's go. It's like the first time that I'm starting the application, so it's just going to crawl. And actually, is okay there's postgres is working all right so if i register that looks like it's working right um so let's try to register scott ha at microsoft.com no i'm not sure why that's in that box um Let's register like this. And uh, I'll give it a really long, appropriate password. I don't think I have it connected to the database properly. Yep. Let's try applying those migrations, see if it works. Try refreshing the page. Don't mind if I do. There we go. All right, so we do get logged in. Good. Um, and I think we left off clicking through here and trying to set my availability. That's what it was. This is where we left off. So we wanted to make this specific page um, be Blazor server side. And we defined a before head section. Let me go back to this. Let's, let's talk about this real quick. So here inside, identity pages. Um... Right? Where is it? We tried to specify an availability section. I don't see it. Um, there it is. Availability. There we go. And we defined this before head section, which is referencing... Silly me. I thought it was going to be referencing this layout where I did add a beforehead section so that I could add some information to try and force Blazor to work. And that's not right. That's not the layout that it's using. It's actually using a different layout. And I was going to try to scaffold that other layout and uh, ran into a little bit of an issue. So, right? We're trying to uh, scaffold identity for ASP.NET Core, right? So if I open this up and it was this one, right? Mm -hmm. And scroll down. I'm trying to do this at the command line. There we go. So I want to see the options. I want to run this and see what we get. Ah, I gotta be in a project. All right, fine. Go into source. Um, Fritz resource management web. Let's scoot that over a smidge so you can see what's going on here. Uh, now let's try that. And look at that sentiment. 100%. Somebody take a picture. That's amazing. 100% sentiment, everybody's smiling, everybody's happy. Yeah, where'd you go, chat room? Come on back. Um, so why didn't it run? Okay, so, all right, so here's the options. Good, good, good. Um, I wanted to try listing the files so I could specify a file to use here, but when I execute this with that dash LF, it does this. Hmm. 
Hey, Crows. Oh my gosh. Crows 4K gifted Nile Crack a subscription. Crows 4K gifted a tier one sub to Nile Crack. They have given 27 gift subs in the channel. <laughs> Thank you so much for that for that gift sub. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Serpent AI is here. All right, now we should defend. Exclamation point defend. We got to let Serpent and and his AI friends there know that we shall defend the channel. Um, thanks so much for the raid there. That's our friend Nicholas who's uh, using a little bit of Python to build an AI and do some really neat stuff over there on his channel. Uh, hey, what's what's going up? What were you working on today? How'd it go over there? And uh, while I, I know there's a little bit of lag in between here. Uh, welcome Raiders, it's so good to see you. My name is Jeff Fritz and we're gonna be writing a little bit of ASP.NET Core with Blazor. Blazor's a new front-end web framework that is written by the ASP.NET team to make C-sharp development a little bit easier, a little bit more spa-like, so you get great response inside your web browser. He uses more than Python. I know, but he's been using a lot of Python to, to build that stuff. It is, it's pretty great what, what he works on over there. Um, last I saw he was using um, PyCharm to, to work over there. It was really neat. Really neat stuff he was working on. Blaze on! Blaze on! Blaze off! The Blazer. No? No? What'd you do? I made a bad dad joke. You have one advanced question for you in chat. Did you use the Azure Service Bus and what is the best way to integrate with .NET Core? Um, Azure Service Bus I'm not using. And there are libraries that will allow you to connect up. There's a NuGet package that will allow you to connect to ASP.NET Core. Um, is that Mashuga Sahin? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is this ASP.NET? This is ASP.NET Core. You got that joke? Oh, thank you. And we're going to be using Blazor. Yep. We're using the server side, not the client side one. I've got a bunch of errors here, and this doesn't feel good. I'm, I feel bad about this. Look at this. Um, depends on SQL Server 3. Now, why is it doing that? Um, cannot access the file because it's, oh, it's running. And it wants to build it. Ugh. Ugh. Let's try that again. See, I'm just trying to get a list of files and then I want to generate. What is Blazor? Um, so Blazor... Blazor comes in two flavors, but it's intended to be a uh, next-generation web development framework that allows uh, C-sharp developers to do some really cool stuff that can run either server-side or client-side when it's compiled into a WebAssembly runtime. Oh, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. And I've already seen you in the chat room, so thank you. Um, yeah, so we're we're taking a look at this and I'm, I'm trying to particularly um, I'm trying to particularly get some files out of the the, the identity uh, template put them down on disk so I can overwrite them but it's telling me yeah files exist I know they exist that's why I'm just saying list files that's what this dash LF is up here so uh, why am I why is this giving me such a hard time um Rest in peace, Snake. Oh. Did I see? I didn't did uh did Nicholas stop in? Yeah, I didn't see him here. That's okay. Uh it's like Angular or Vue, but C sharp. Yep. That same type of uh uh single page application framework. Except, yeah, C sharp. Really neat stuff. Um, so options, I want to say no build, I think, right? If I, can I pass that in and will it properly no build? Let's see what happens. Um, uh, see, I, see that? It's still, r <laughs> I'm asking for a list of files and it wants to overwrite these files. Part of me says, let it overwrite the files. Uh, yeah. Because I can just roll it back. Because I've got the GitHub. Uh, welcome to Fritz and Friends. Yes, welcome. Um, let me, I've, one second here. Um, there we go. 
Uh, okay, so there's the file list. All right, I want account manage layout. So if I want that file, uh, oh, rats, I gotta run help again. What is it? Um, da -da -da. Come on. I want to generate. I don't want to. Well, okay, generate layout, but which layout is it? Internal CLR error. Now I've done it. Um. So what happens if I do a dash GL? What's it do? You know what I mean? Wonder what file it's going to write down. Uh, I didn't realize this stream ended to happen while you were getting food. Oh, no problem. Well, welcome. I uh, hope you enjoy your, your dinner, your lunch, whatever it might be. No, I'm still going to get these errors. You make me sad. You make me really sad. Manage pages, account, manage, index, CSHTML, CS. Why doesn't it like that file? I mean, it builds properly for us outside. Right? Right, it's telling me it doesn't like this file. And when I look at this file, it's sure building properly. Like, I'm not getting any error marks here. And if I tell it to build, it, it builds. Reports of my death are greatly exaggerated, says JavaScript. I am, I believe I'm running the latest version of the bot. So you can do things like that. Now, why didn't it say it? That should have worked. Scott! See, that worked. See? Huh? I wonder if it didn't put it in the container. See, that one worked. Media source, media resource indicated by the source attribute or assigned media pro was not suitable. Really, it's not there. See, look at that. It says it's not there. Let's see if we can do a quick debug of what's going on there. Uh, I'm going to do a Docker exec so I can get into my uh, container here. Um, and I'm going to get into the stream tools one, this right here. So I'm going to go into stream tools and I want to run bash so I can have a console and peek around here. Um, I'm going to go into dub dub root, go into contents. It's behind my head again. Sorry about that. Let's see. Um, oh my gosh. Do you see what I did? Check this out. Let me know when you see it. Let me know when you see it. Chat is slow. Eh, it's not too slow. You really recommend Canvas for doing stuff in JavaScript. If you're going to go vanilla. Helpful for learning before you start with CSS and HTML. Um, why? Exactly. Uh, TBD gamer yeah the case of these doesn't match what it's actually looking for it's looking for all lowercase that's why JavaScript works oh my should work for learning you're if you're using canvas you're painting things on on the raw browser not necessarily um, working with the Dom I mean don't you want to work with the DOM? And yes, case matters in Linux. So I should be able to do... Yeah, see, and then... Mm, no. There is no and then seven, actually. Um, it's actually six, I think it is. Because we only have six of these. I renumbered in the commands. <laughs> um, but you should be able to do... Oh, my. See, that one works. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cheat. To and right and then dot mp3 uh, and then one dot 
Not MPEG. Right? Uh, three to and then three dot MP. It's easier said than done. And then four to and then four uh, MP3. Uh huh. And then five to and then five MP3. Uh, six to and then six. Uh, I keep hitting tab there, and that's not a thing. That one worked. Ha <laughs> ha. There. Now, that should all work. Cool. Uh, um, so if I do an end then. And then. There it works. Fantastic. All right. Fixed. Now, there are some cooldowns there. And then. See that? See, I would have spent three hours writing a script to do this instead of three minutes doing it manually. <laughs> well, what I'm going to do now is at some point I'll go back in and rename the files on disk. Right? So that they are all lowercase. Right? I'll need to go figure that out. Um, and then? I'll uh, save those files so that they're properly named locally. Right? Um, so that'll be a thing. Right? I'm, th I'm sure there is a one bash script you could have used. Oh, yeah. Sure. You forgot the D, Stelzy. And you don't need a one at, at the end of it. The first one is just, and then. And it just works. All right. Um, moving on. I don't know why it's telling me it can't build this. That's just weird. What is this one? Oh, yeah. Um, right? Even though I'm telling it... Uh, oh, all right. Well, hang on. Maybe if I give it that no build argument. See, look at this. I am I am changing back and forth between topics so fast. Squirrel! Um, why one, three, four, five, six, seven? It, well, those are the file names, right? So the file names are different. You know what I should do? I should just randomly choose one when you say and then. So you don't have to specify the number. And just let it go figure it out. Go do the thing. I need to give it the dot force. Hopefully it builds and gives me my files. See, Janescu found one that worked. Come on, come on. Finding, running, yeah, yeah. If this oh doesn't my. work, I know, right? Come on, do it. You can see it's like Visual Studio is like freaking out over here. Ah, files. Look at that, 55 new files. That's a problem. I'm not gonna freak out. I have the power of GitHub. It is strong. Behold the power of source control. Um, because I can just roll back and delete all this crap. <laughs> or I could just leave it there and update it as I need it. That's not too bad either. Right, if I if I leave these mod if I roll these ones back and leave all these other things that it generated, just leave them on disk. And, and override them as I see fit. That's not too bad, is it? What's going on there, chat room? It's been a while. Oh my gosh, did somebody else raid us? Um, something strange is happening? No. That Oh, that was the bot. My bad. Uh, maybe it's a permission issue. Permission issue. Permission issue. Permission issue. <laughs> I got it right. Uh, is that Mui? Mu Mu Muhi31, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. And I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Or Sean Connery. Yeah. Sean Connery. You have to ask me nicely. And maybe Sean Connery quotes can get into the thing here. Um, I'm sorry. 
Can you do C Sharp with Xamarin on Mac? Asks Firebrim. Actually, we were going to have the Visual Studio for Mac team joining us this evening. I'm glad you brought that up, Firebrim. Thanks so much for asking. Points to oh you. Oh my. Yes, oh my indeed. Um, they had to push back their release. They have a preview release they're, they're pushing out. They had to push it back. They're going to join. We're going to try and get them in next week. But we will be back with the Mac doing development. It might not be Xamarin. But we'll definitely be doing uh, development on a Mac with .NET next time. Next Thursday evening is what we're looking at because they're on the West Coast. So it makes it easier. It's 3 p.m. instead of 7 a.m. when I normally... It's a thing. Trust me. Uh, Zandozi, thanks so much for the follow. Mono on Linux. Tell you what, uh, Tazo is that... Let me make sure I'm pronouncing it right. Is it Tazocan or is it Tazocan? Let, let me know. I want to make sure I pronounce your name properly. Um, we did Ubuntu-ber in October, and we spent the whole month doing .NET Core on Linux, and that was a lot of fun. Um, but we can we can definitely revisit that at some point. I want to do artificial intelligence stuff in July, so maybe we'll be doing some mono with artificial intelligence and machine learning on Linux in July. Let me know. I'll I, I'm definitely open to checking that out uh do, 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 do. visual studio code is on mac as well yeah using the and then command and have it with a list of sounds in the counter for command called go through a random and then list of sounds yeah that's a great idea janesco yeah but didn't the microsoft guy say that future development should just be blazer instead for cross-platform i don't know which guy you're you're referring to but i that's Mm, that .NET Core is cross-platform, and that's where we're encouraging folks to go. Thank you, Teso Can. All right, I, I'll I'll go with that pronunciation, or maybe I'll just rotate pronunciations, and we'll figure it out one day and say yes, that's the right one, and uh, and it'll be magical. Okay, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. check out Xamarin. Yeah, is that Shikyu? Xamarin has some really great stuff for uh, it is a lot a little bit more limited on Mac um, they're making it better they're they're working hard to make it better and they're cross pollinating they're bringing the features of Visual Studio 2019 into Visual Studio for Mac you'll see that improve significantly over the next uh, the next year all right so I did a reset hard there what that does is it's rolling back just those modified files see that three here that's the number of modified files. So it, it reverted those, and that's why I have a tilde zero here. There are no modified files, but I do have those 55 new files in the mix. So now, I'm not going to add them to source control yet, because I don't trust it. I want to make sure that they work properly now. Before I... Put the candle back. Let's make sure it works first. What prompt is that? This is called posh git. Um, you can, uh, I don't think I have that in my, in my, uh, uh, list of commands here, but you can, you can look for, uh, posh git and you can find information about this where it gives you in your PowerShell scripts, uh, information about GitHub. See that? I knew it. I knew it. Bill failed. Error typer namespace. Error? Mm. The I'm having a hard time with this one. The type or namespace name error model could not be found. What do you mean you can't find error model? This is an error CSHTML. Where is that? Error.csh. Uh, error model. Right. Where is it? Error. Yeah. Error model. It's right there. Um, while that's going, I'm going to make sure I restart Karnak here because we love Karnak. Karnak's going to show you the keystrokes that I'm using, the shortcut keys. And I'll move it right back down there. Oh my gosh, here comes Michael Jolly. <laughs> defend the channel. Oh my gosh. Exclamation point defend. Let him know we shall defend the channel. Oh, look at the hype from Rambling Geek and M. Holloway. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Nick Larson, happy Thursday to you too. 
Linux Mountain. Thank you for the follow. There's a lot happening all of a sudden. Oh my gosh. Rambling Geek with the Twitch Prime sub. Ten months. Rambling Geek just resubscribed for ten months. Ten months. One. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And we'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code. There we go. We shall defend the channel. There it is. No gritties. Chris Jones. Chris Jones just resubscribed for 11 months. Yeah. And then... It didn't say anything. Thank you so much for the resub. That is phenomenal. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate the support. And we'll make donations to Veterans Who Code. Why isn't this building? Now I feel bad. Do it. Start. Number one. And Since bitch. there is so much going on, piling it on, <laughs> and then... <laughs> Thank you so much for those cheers. Um, this is weird. Oh my gosh, and Rambling Geek with the 50. Thank you very much. And now Michael Jolly with 49. Now, uh, wasn't intentional. Oh my goodness. Um, let me... Wow. Oh my gosh. There, there is a, a, I mentioned there is a, look at it, Michael Jolly is going to fill up that event list over there, so it's just his name. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, I don't know why this isn't building. This feels really weird. Warning. Yeah, yeah, that's, it, it doesn't have the exact match. The appropriate match was, yeah, with some goofy extension preview number. I don't care about that. The using director for Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity appeared previously in this namespace. Really? Yeah, it did. You make me sad. So now let's try building. Gotta run, see you later. Thanks, Chris Jones. I appreciate you joining us. There we go. Carrie, thanks so much for that very kind cheer. I gotta go back and look here, because there's a number of cheers there that I need to record. Uh, thank you so much, and that's going to reward uh, three others in chat with uh, Pride emotes. Twitch is supporting the Trevor Project this month uh, for cheers 200 bits and larger. I not am not myself just gifted five subs. <laughs> I, I've lost control. I've lost wow. control. Um, other folks will receive Pride emotes in channel that you can use everywhere. Uh, folks in channel will receive pride emotes and you can use them everywhere here on Twitch. They're globals. They'll always be available to you. I am not myself. Thanks so much for the five gift subs. Uh, let's see. Who's getting those? Handsome Rob, Perry at Digital Ox, Wodo Weasel, Droopy Piles. Congratulations. You've all just got uh, a gift subscription to the channel. Thanks so much. I am not myself for sharing that. That is phenomenal. Uh, and more gifts up, more gift emotes to folks in chat. Thank you so much, Carrie. I've lost control. It's, we've gone off the rails here. This is insane. Oh my gosh. Uh, there was a comment about asking, uh, let me go back here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Someone was saying about, Scott Hunter was saying everybody should use Blazor for cross-platform going forward. It, I don't think it was at, on a .NET Rocks episode. It wasn't everybody should use Blazor. It's Blazor's becoming a, a Blazor is cross-platform, and it's becoming a preferred user interface framework from what we're seeing from folks that are trying it. Um, we'll see how it how it resides going forward. But .NET Core that Blazor is built on top of is what you should be using to get cross-platform going forward. Uh, that was Sync stuff. There you go. Um, and actually we had Scott on, on the show here, um, during build. And he answered some questions around that as well at that time. Uh, a friend is streaming AutoCAD to help get more business. Any recommendations? Uh, I have no idea. You have a beauty hat you unveiled on Michael Jolly's stream. Really? Neat. Yeah, sync stuff. I, it, it, it's a little bit confusing because there's a lot of new frameworks and a lot of new product names that are coming out. Um, I'm yeah, Bla Blazor isn't specifically something that's going to get you cross-platform. It operates cross-platform, but Blazor operates on .NET Core. I believe maybe the confusion there. I, I can double-check that. 
Um, and we can get back to you. Guess the hat. This. Oh my gosh, Carrie got her hat. Is that the Azure A hat? Did you get your Azure A hat? <gasps> no Opcat was in Lucky Number Seven stream. <gasps> there it is. There's Junie. There's Junie. Throw me a freaking bone here. My music. My music is depressing you. Who said that? Where Where'd that go? Uh, Barnyard Man. Okay, Barnyard Man. Here's what I'm gonna do for you then. Before I Before I change hats. Right. We're just about done that one. Let's put on a peppier song here. I'm gonna put on. I I'm not, I can't play the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean theme, otherwise they're gonna censor me. They'll mute me. Uh, it'll be a mutiny for muting me. A mutiny mutiny. No, something like that. Um, let's put on Cyan then, because I know this is a little bit more upbeat. Barnyard man, what do you think of this one? Hang on, Junie. Hang on. Hang on. One at a time here. What's that? You have to ask me nicely. I'm going to put... Here we go. Right? I promised Junie that I would put on the Pirates of the Caribbean hat. See, now here's the problem. I can't hear anything with the big headphones. See? So I need to change headphones. So I gotta go over, no, not those. See, all the Apple AirPod, AirBuds now, earbuds, they're all that stupid lightning connector. So now I need to change this sound, do this with this thing. Now I can hear. What do you think, right? It's kind of folded over there. Let's see if we can prop that back up. There we go. Don't tell Svava. Don't don't tell Svava and the folks over there in her, in her Discord. What do you think, huh? Look at that. The the pirate is strong. So many years ago. I know, right? Uh, too bad Hunter is at work. He loves the Telerik pirate. Oh my gosh, yes. I did the ice bucket challenge because I was the Telerik pirate years and years ago. Um, you like this better, Barnyard Man? Well, all right, good. Don't tell NASA, says Hiptacular, Hiptacular Raptor. I like it. Next thing you know, we'll be dropping types in favor of using tuples everywhere. Maybe we could do that. It, one thing that's kind of annoying is the, the Captain Jack's pieces of eight here keep thwacking me in the face. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Um, all right, so why isn't this building? This makes me feel like dirty why it's not building. It's still this type or namespace error model could not be found in identity pages error CSHTML. Let's go see what that is. Um, identity pages, it's not in here. Error, this error CSHTML, it's right there. What do you, how'd I do, uh, Junie? You like it? Swanky, right? Not bad. Um, okay. Uh, let me go back to, there's 88-bit is starting. Nice, we like 88-bit. Um, check out 88-bit music if you get a chance. Um, I gotta plug my phone back in, hang on. Darnits. Ah, good. Thank you so much for the for the follow there, Darnits. Uh-oh. Fritz wears another hat. You like that ancient coder? You like that? Eh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. It's... I, I do need to do something. This hat is all bent out of shape. There's wires in it, so it keeps its shape. And it's kind of, you know, kind of bent a little. Right? It's a little bit better, at least. All right, where am I going here? The wings. Yeah, the wings are pretty cool. So swanky and awesome. All right, there we go. Why isn't it finding this behind this page? Model error model. Okay, so that at least it's it's getting grumpy about. So what if I just, I'm gonna force the issue here and put this in there. So, right, this is called a namespace for those of you that aren't familiar with C-sharp. 
typically it expects to find that namespace, right? Because I'm under Fritz Resource Management Web. That's the name of my project. Um, actually, it's under Areas, Identity, Pages, right? These folder names, it kind of by default sticks on here. Areas, Identity, Pages. And Error Model, right? Which is this class. See, Error Model, and it's inside that namespace. This should have found it by just referencing that namespace. Let's force a build again here and see if it gets a little bit less grouchy. Here we go. Build succeeded. Of course it succeeded right there. Look at that. Boom, right? Boom goes the dynamite. Where is it? I need a, I, I need a boom. There it is. There went the dynamite. Svava. It's it's amazing. It's it's a pirate hat. Totes, my goats. Totes. Did you turn it off and back on again? No. Rainbow Clippy and his pirate. We do have Rainbow Clippy, right? There's you still have Rainbow Clippy. Is an emote that everybody has here in the channel. Which reminds me, um, if anybody's going to Dev Intersection next week, there you go. I have Rainbow Clippy stickers to give out next week. I have Rainbow Bearded Clippy, I have Rainbow Bearded Octocat, and Fritzbot stickers to give out next week. How many times have you been to Tortuga? Um, enough that I don't need to pay for rum anymore when I go there? How's that? Carrie Payette will be there. Oh my gosh, we'll have to do a stream together. It'll be amazing. It'll be amazing. We'll have to do something. It'll be just phenomenal. Definitely. I live there. No, I, I, I live in um, Pennsylvania. Reminds me. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for reminding me. Uh, points there to the Junie Von Esch. Um, folks have been asking me, hey, I'd like to be able to send you some stickers, some whatever. Um, unknown Kiddo, thank you for the follow. And is that Wodo Weasel? Thank you so much for the follow as well. Um, I now have a P.O. box. There's a there's uh, an address you can find just below the video here in the about panel. If you want to send me something, there's a PO box you can send stuff to, and uh, we'll uh, be happy to pick that up and open open stuff here on stream if you uh, if that's something you're interested in. So it's like Razor with a markup is implicitly in the same namespace at least when it's working. It should be Simon. It should be, but for some reason it wasn't. Um. Oh, so what a weasel! You were subscribed and didn't have the follow. You got the the surprise squirrel emote there. Um, it's a little known fact: the surprised squirrel emote. That's a drawing by Mrs. C Sharp Fritz. Pennsylvania is coal country. Used to work underground. Um, more power to you, Harrison four six four. Did you check the view imports CSHTML? Well, let's take a look. See. Um, so it's already using. For its resource management web areas identity. It should probably include. Wait a sec. Wait a tick. Should include that. That might help with this. I bet you that was it. I bet you that was it. I think is that uh, Fred Yadrino? Fred Y Adrino? Let me know. Um, yeah. Build succeeded that time. Nice catch. Points to you, sir. Um, I, you know, I should have just checked the build log. No, no more of that. You have more than one error model, and it found the, uh, the other one first. Now it actually didn't find either, because it didn't know how to get to that namespace. So it wasn't available to it. I am getting thwacked in the face by this thing. Um, it's it's old school. It's no, I'm not gonna go there. All right. Um, what time is it? I've been wasting time here. I'm I am so sorry. All right. So we have that building. Let's see if it actually uh, works now. Right. That'd be nice if it worked. No. Hit the play button, Jeff. Let's see what happens. What do you think? So where are you from, uh, 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 Harrison? Um, I'm on the east 
southeast side of the state, down near Philadelphia. Coal country, it sounds like you're from a little bit further up north and to the west of me. All right, let's see what we got here. Log in. Well, that's just ducky. Now I've broken it. Now I've gone too far. Um, unable to resolve service for type, Microsoft ASP.NET Core, sign-in manager, Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity user. Ah, we are, yeah. Okay, so when I generated all those files, we uh, generated some content here that is not referencing our object. So in the login, there you go. Sign in manager identity user. It's not called identity user, it's called my user. Why is it called my user? Because I said so. There you go. Right? Um, do, do you like that? How's that? Is that better? I love it when a plan comes together. Darn skippy, I do. Uh, so sign in manager equals sign in manager. So this needs to be my user as well. Um, register probably needs the same deal going on there, right? Yep, there they are. Um, at, uh, is that Akiro? Akiro, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us on this fine Thursday or Friday morning, depending on uh, what side of the international dateline you're on. But I appreciate you joining us. So let's see, if I fix that... Then these need to be my user as well. And like that. All right. Let's, Let's see, if, see there's if there's... What was, what was that? that? Oh, oh no. no. That's better. Um, oh my good lord, look at this. Identity user is all over the place. There are 85 references to it. And the fact of the matter is, I don't use it, except for there. So I think what I need to do, hmm. ooh, this one's gonna break too. See that there? Let's see, it shouldn't be new identity user, it should be new my user, so that it can create that appropriately, yeah. All right. I think I'm going to need to do a big old find and replace here and just blast through these. What do you think? What do you think, chat room? Um, yeah. Yeah, Andre Samaras. I think so. Robert Tables, Roberta Bowles, as it were, is here. Um, What'd you do? Yeah, what did you do? Uh, be easier to change your one from my user. You're right. Did somebody say Docker? Docker, Docker, Docker. Boom! Robert Tables appears. It's like Beetlejuice, but with Docker. Anyways. Um, all right. Find what? I'm going to find identity user. Replace with uh, my user. Um, I don't want to do a replace all. You know? Because I feel like if I do a replace all, there's a high likelihood I'm going to go break something in a place that it shouldn't be touched. Right. Um, <laughs> and actually, isn't there a way to use regular expressions? Mm. Can I do that? Right, or like that? What happens if I do that? Yeah, that works. Um... All right, so if I say replace, right? Oh, that works. That, that. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, rats. Now I've, now I've done it. Now I've gone too far. Uh, Source Scoot, thanks so much for the host. Is that a raid coming in? Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for that raid. Welcome, Raiders. There's some defense from Carrie Payette. Thank you. Thank you for the follow, Top Fuel. Uh, welcome, Raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz. I'm a pirate. 
60% of the time, it works every time. No, no, no. Um, I'm just wearing a funny pirate hat as a salute to our friend, uh, the Junie Von Esch. Um, we're writing a little bit of C-sharp code today. We're hooking up some authentication to a ASP.NET Core Blazor application. And uh, we're going to start allowing folks inside this application to be able to store their uh, schedule availability. That way, as they're building out their, um, their schedule for this application, um, we know who they are, right? You need to log in so we know who you are so we can do the thing, right? That's going to be important. Um, let's do this. Try that again. So I'm going to find, I'm going to just find, oh my goodness. Rift87. Rift 87 just resubscribed for two months. Thanks so much for that very kind subscription. And we will make a donation to Veterans Who Code. Um, don't anybody tell my boss that I'm wearing this hat on stream. He won't get it at all. It just will go right over his head. No, I don't know. Maybe that's too much. Maybe I'm overthinking that. All right, let's... Scott! Him! Yes! Right? We all know who he is. Um, and I'm going to control dot on that. Get the using statement. Replace the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Yeah, this wasn't going to be just an easy... Find or replace everything. Oh, my goodness. Ugh. Oh boy. I'm going to have to go through and do a make sure the using statements are in all of these things as I go along here. This is a pain in the neck. Who would do such a thing? Yep, replace that one too. Yep, yep. Sure. Whatever. Okay, do the thing. Wow, they weren't kidding when there was, uh, right, 80 some of these? Dear Lord. All right, I think we're down into the migrations now, so I don't think we need that. Let me just do some of these controlled dots so we can clean that up. I, I just saved. All right. Uh, this one, control dot, that'll get me the using statement so that we have the appropriate namespace. Get rid of that one. Back over here, control dot, using statement. Save it, close it. Right, control dot. Uh, yes, give me the using statement. Save it, close it. Oh my gosh. Hold on while I shave the yak here, right? Ugh. What a pain in the neck. I'm going to look at that chat room in just a second. Let me know what's going on over there, chat room. Should I be worried? Everything. Everybody's staying in line there. Robert Tables, you, are they running amok? Are they getting out of control in that chat room? Let me know. Uh, more. Uh, no, I hit build. Yeah, of course it's going to fail. Look at that. There's all the places I have to fix this still. All right. Control dot. Oh, I went too far. Oh, that time I went too far. That's the delete personal data stuff. That's a GDPR thing. And don't we love GDPR? No. Your talent? Your talent who? Scott, yeah. Needs more eyeliner to go with that hat. I'm not opposed to working on that one. There were build errors. Of course there were. Error model cannot be found. I thought we just fixed that. Let's see. Um, over here, doing this one. All right. So let's build, clean solution, build. Come on. Rebuild, here we go. Yar, how's it going, matey? TraceX dump says, help. What's the matter, Trace? Um, hey, BB and VA. Good to see you, BB. Um, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Do you? Do you? People know me. And they're, they're okay with me wearing this. You think that hat needs more beard and a few beads? That's not a bad idea either. I like it. Yeah, it'll be more like guidelines, quiet. There you go. 
and that shares rewards to 10 others in chat fantastic thank you so much robert tables um yeah 10 other folks in chat are going to get pride emotes thanks to robert tables very kind cheer and we're going to make a donation to veterans who code all right i think i fixed everything there let's see we should be able to log in now and get this blazer book recommend blazer isn't even done they haven't written a book yet i would say go to blazer.io and start there they're it, it's not done it's still in preview mode um, we're at preview five and preview six is due to come out any day now. Day now. Ah. No. Um, let's see if I can remember that password I just wrote. Come on, log in. Log in. All right. Now we're talking. Microsoft Edge will save and fill in your password for this site next time. Sure, do it. Um, all right, and if I click availability, boom. All right, so I need the before head section. Smackdown smile. Nice. Three others are going to get some pride emotes. Thank you so much for, for that, Carrie. I need to be copying in some of these cheers. I've missed them all. I'm so sorry. Yeah, check out those emotes. Very cool stuff. Um, Junie's still here. Hey, Junie. All right. I'm go Junie's so happy because I gave her a new voiceover today. Um, I'm not going to play it on my stream because I swear in it. And it's tremendous. If you're in Svava's um, Discord, Svava Blount's Discord, you can find it in the streams channel. I posted it over there. Of course... I'm here before you wore the hat for me, so why not? So I did. I didn't. I wore my Overwatch hat first. What was I doing? Oh, I needed to fix the layout. That's what it was. Um, layout, layout, layout. Which layout is it gonna be? Is it here? Index? No. Which layout is it looking at? Pages account manage underscore layout. Pages account manage. Ah, this one. Yes, there it is. Which references area identity pages layout. Uh, okay. Area. I, uh, pages. I don't see layout here. Right? There is no underscore layout here. Damn it, after I generated all that stuff, it's still not there. I swore, e I know. Eh. Uh, so uh, you're honoring the hat choice by watching and trying to understand, not a coder, but a supporter. Thank you, Junie. So I'm looking for the layout file here, but it's not here, which means that this is still referencing and pulling out of, um, it's pulling out of the, uh, pulling out of this thing um, so let's see if we can get it to let's right okay hang on hang on I'm going to commit what I have right now uh, no I need to add it first right okay um, Give it a message. We're going to say something like uh, work in progress, uh, working on identity files, something like that. And I will sign my commit. All right. I'm not going to push that up yet um, because now I'm going to go back to that help message. Here we go. Um, I want to not generate layout. That's a bad idea. Uh, no, no. I want to generate a file. Files. Dash FI. That's what I want. All right. Where is it? So this is going to let me generate. It's going to let me bring that file out that I want. So I'm going to say dash FI. And it was... What was it? Uh, identity pages layout like that let's see if that works come on come on it's right there it's right there 
That posh window is giving you the holiday spirits as I am not myself. Nice. Two months of watching C-Sharp Fritz, you'll be ready for your first dev gig. There you go, right? Uh, that's not the right page. Let's see, what do we got here? Honest Dan, Dan Games! Oh my goodness! We've got a raid coming in. Alright, let's defend the channel. Exclamation point, defend. I need a video for this. I've got to do something about that. Oh my gosh, Honest Dan, thanks so much for the raid. Woo! Look at them all coming in here. 22 friends. Welcome, raiders. It's so good to see. I love the defend bots. I like that one better than my defend little block of text. We've got to do something about that. You like the hat, JSP87? You like the hat? It's a great hat. Um, What does defend do? It just puts a block of text on the screen. That's all. How's it going? It's going great, Honest Dan. Thanks so much for the raid. Raiders... My name is Jeff Fritz. Welcome to the channel. We're writing a little bit of ASP.NET Core with Blazor today. Blazor is a single-page application framework that's written entirely in C-sharp and is available for .NET developers to use to uh, work with their code and deliver that single-page application type of experience, that high-performance web experience, either server-side or client-side using WebAssembly technology. So thanks so much for joining us. Um, stumbling in late with Honest Dan. That's okay, Partly Atomic. Thanks so much. We bless the rains down in Africa. <laughs> and I'm now ready to take over the world. Yes. Yes. I need a... a I do need the pinky and the brain emotes. Hmm. Sound effects. Yeah. We And, my gosh, so many folks came in here. They've gone to Plaid. They did. They went to Plaid. Thank you, Raiders, for joining on the raid. I really appreciate that. Um, so, Honest Dan Games... What'd you do? ...in your stream. Let me know. Um, I can't find... Nuts. I can't find pages layout. Is it... What was the name of the... the we, we got a file list here before. Right? By doing something like that. Uh, Yokoso, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. And I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Uh, let's see if that'll show me what we got here. 90 minutes over scheduled stream time and, oh my gosh, 30 after midnight. Half, half past midnight? Yeah. You're going to have to, uh, thanks so much. Different input schemes in Unreal Engine 4 with C++. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. Authentication for a scheduling app. Yes. It's going to be amazing. I promise. Hopefully. Um, there it was. It's the slashes is what I needed for this generation. So it's not... It's not identity.pages.layout. It's areas, identity, pages. Man uh, was it manage? No. It was pages underscore layout. It's here somewhere. I know it is. I'm not going to let it get out of here without me without me finding it and I don't see it in the list why don't I see it in the list it's gotta be here give me that give me that file you know you want to build it was not present in the dictionary What do I do? Um, well, that's kind of crazy. It's not here. How is it not here? Right? There's manage underscore layout, which we got. Right? Uh, account manage. We got that file, and it references areas identity pages underscore layout, which doesn't exist. Right? So if I go into my page that's that's giving us the the problem here. Uh, something like this. Right, we comment things out with this at star sign here. Um, and if I restart this. CLI tools, the power to break more things faster. Yeah, Simon, you're right. You're about to get a serious beat down. Courtesy of the CLI tools command line interface 
Um, <laughs> take care, Honest Dan. It was great seeing you. Thanks so much for the raid. I really appreciate it. Uh, Honest Dan Games is another one of the live coders. You can find more information about the live coders team if you click that link just below there. Uh, there's 51 members in the team, including great folks like Honest Dan Games, who's programming with C++ and the Unreal Engine. You can find Lana Lux, who's also building... Uh, uh, games using Unity and C Sharp, or you can find folks that are building stuff like IoT with uh, like Internet of Things things, like Carrie Payette and No Opcat, or containers like Robert Tables. We just added Fun Fun Function. That's I forget his name in, in his YouTube account, but every Monday you can find him uh, building all kinds of great new stuff. Hey, it works. Kind of. Yep, doesn't find Blazor. Um, so check it out. All kinds of great stuff in the Live Coders team. I did add MPJ, yes. <laughs> I haven't gotten him in the in the team Discord yet, but he's here. Um, all great people still cry in the corner secretly. Um, I was doing it last night. Let's see here. Fun Fun Function is a pretty cool stream. I agree. Server responded with a status of 404. So what's going on here, and this is what we were trying to work around, is it's trying to find Blazor. And the Blazor reference that it gets by default, well, it's it's not even here. Are you kidding me? There's no code here. Where'd the code... Where's the code gone? Now, okay, that's just... Hang on. Refresh that page. There we go. See, it's looking for identity account manage framework Blazor server JS, and it can't find it. That's not a thing. We are slowly taking over Twitch. Yes, we are. Where is it? Where's all the rum gone? And the Blazor. Where's all the Blazor gone? Squirrel! Yeah. I'm distracted. Uh, you have to ask it more like a pirate to find out where the rum is. I don't have a good sound changeover for that. Mm. Yeah, I don't have a good sound effect for that. Where has all of the blazer gone? We need to find the blazer. Um, so this is weird here. Right? Um, I feel like somebody's got to have an article about this, right? Add blazer to an existing application. Search the DuckDuckGo. Quack. Um, how to add Blazor to an existing ASP.NET Core app. Don't mind if I do. Uh, integrating Blazor into existing ASP.NET Core. Oh my gosh! It's not going to read that. Ninja Bunny's here with 37 viewers. Ninja Bunny, thank you so much for that very kind raid. Oh my gosh. Now I, now I do... Welcome, Raiders. It's so good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah. All right. Um, my gosh, Ninja Bunny, thanks so much for the raid. Uh, welcome, Raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz. I'm a pirate. Hey, Steve. You're getting a little sweaty over there. You've been busy tonight announcing all of our new followers. I am a pirate. Uh, Ninja Bunny 9000 just resubscribed for three months. Are you a pirate? Yes, I am. King Scorpion 64 and Life's Meaning 42. Thanks so much for the follows. Um, we the, the the Ninja Bunny army is incoming and they are strong. Um, thanks so much for joining us, Raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz. We're writing a little bit of C Sharp. We're working with Blazor. That's a web framework, web user interface framework to build an application that's going to allow folks to record their availability for scheduling purposes when we want to schedule them to work a job, right? Um, so that's what we're working on, and we're seeing a little bit of an issue here as we try to add the reference to our Blazor JavaScript. You can see it here, just over my shoulder. 
Um, it's it's not quite referencing the URL correctly. It should be referencing it off the root of the application, but it's pulling a, a relative address here. We're going to try and fix that real quick. Uh, just had to check. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah. So uh, I've got to ask, because it worked so well when I asked it last time. Um, let me find it here. Uh, Ninja Bunny. What'd you do? In your stream tonight. Ha! <laughs> See how I did that? I clicked the button and it clicked through. Never mind. Um, just had to check. Well, thank you. So I'm looking for a little bit of documentation here. I'm looking for a little bit of help to get this lined up quite. Get this lined up right. Um, how do I add Blazor page to it? Uh, I don't. Th that's a little bit too far back. Adding Blazor into existing applications. Look at this. My gosh. That's pretty... Um, I'm not going to pronounce that name, but welcome, Phil. I appreciate you joining us, Phil. Uh, Circuit Python. Cool. Troubleshooting something dumb for an hour. I've, we end up troubleshooting a lot of things when we're live coding. It's a thing. Um, so, yeah. But thank you for the follow, uh, Phil. Nice spoonerism. Yeah, right. Uh, let's see here. Adding the component. So I'm trying to add components in here and invoke my component. Script source right there. Tilde, Blazor, Framework, Blazor, Server, JS. If I try and drop that in, isn't that what I was using over... Not there. That, uh, oh. I wonder if I do that and kind of force the issue. Where'd I go? Right there. Right. Can I get that to work? Maybe. I have to stop and restart it because our CSHTML files are, are compiled each time. So I have to stop and start. You were wondering why the bot wasn't responding to commands. It was in the wrong channel. Oh my gosh. Put the candle back. You were stuck on the other side. You couldn't get access to the right channel. Oh my gosh. Oh, what a kick in the teeth that is. You hate it when your bot goes and hangs out in a more popular channel. I know, my bot goes and hangs out in InstaFluff's channel all the time. Who knew? All right, let's try this. Availability. All right, so that? No. Uh, ooh. Okay, wait a sec. No, look at that. Normalizing Blazor to... So Blazor Server JS. It f found it. But it's like at the wrong... It's like at the wrong location, you know? You felt so dumb it was working perfectly, chasing ghosts. Oh. It's illegal in nine countries. So don't let it get to you. Um, so it's not able to connect because it's, it's normalizing this location to the wrong place. All right, so how do we force that? How do we force that to the appropriate place? Let's see if there's anything more here. Um, layout equals null. I don't want to do that. Right, we've already done this. Yeah. No. No. Yes. Yes. No. Um, here's some awful CSS. That makes me feel good when I when I read some authoritative documentation and it says, "Here's some awful CSS to work with that." Are, are you kidding? I, I read that and I want to go... Come on now. You're better than that. Visual Studio Magazine. Um, let's see if we do this one. Um, <laughs> single page application using server side. Blazor is now in blah blah blah. Da, 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 da. App map... Hmm. Hmm. That sounds interesting. Here comes trouble. Just saw Michael Jolly come online. <laughs> oh no. All of my code should state here some awful code, honestly. Oh. Um, oh gosh. Oh gosh. You have this MVC app that you want to convert to Blazor, but you can't do it in one big bang simply because it's too much work. Yes. 
How do I navigate from Blazor to an MVC page then? Solution I found is to host Blazor in a subfolder of the site. How do you do this? It's not very well documented, so I'm doing that here. Fantastic. In Startup CS, change the app.useBlazor statement to app map Beezer. Oh, okay. Child, child.useBlazor, Blazor.program. And in index HTML, alter base href to base href Beezer. You can then navigate from Blazor to any MVC page in the same app. Wait a sec. Hmm. Every time I get blamed to find out who wrote this, <laughs> you find out it was me. Oh no. Um. All right. Let's let's think about this for a second. If I go look at startup, right? Map Blazor Hub, and then map fallback to area page host identity. Uh, uh, wow, me Tin McSteel. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Somebody's trying to get me to say some things. Um... I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. All right, take care, Rambling Geek. Good to see you. So, map razor pages. Map fall back to area host. So it's falling back to slash host, which is this one. Inside the host page. Let's see what that does. Right, I think it's falling back to that. Do, 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 do. Oh, it disappeared. Rats. Come on. Open. Find it. Look at that. If I turn, it's like 3D and you can see around my hat. Isn't that amazing? All right. Log in. Here we go. Logging in. Doing the thing. Getting the stuff. Good. Click here. Click there and now hmm all right something else is going on here that i don't understand yeah close the window um hmm the host page that's out here does blazer start configure single or um uh, should it be should this one be like that too did I miss that one? I hope it's not just that one. That'd be great if it was, but I, I don't think it is. Part of me wants to grab the Dan Roth or um, Ryan Nowak is the lead engineer I've been working with. Have them take a look at this, uh, what I'm trying to do here and tell me whether I'm completely off my rocker or not. Because I don't want to just can Blazer and say, nope, we're not going to do it. So I went to that page. No, it normalized it again. Blazor negotiate. Yeah, because it's not, it's getting a 404 when it's trying to get to, when it's trying to get to this page. Look at that. Identity account manage underscore Blazor negotiate. It's not forcing itself to the root of this. What if I wrote... Yep, yeah, DevExpress did release a video about getting started with Blazor. I don't think they're doing this. Um, identity account manage Blazor. Uh, what if... What if we wrote a redirect rule for that? Right, and we got it to redirect to slash Blazor. That could work, right? That could work, right? So if we take a look at this and uh, we want to do ASP.NET Core and we want to write a redirect rule. There's a couple of different ways to do this. URL rewriting middleware. There we go. Something like this. Move or replace server resources. Split. Optimize public URLs. Permit the use of friendly public URLs. Fix a stupid problem. Yeah. 
no, no, no. Mm. Which contains the ASP.NET Core rewrite. Fantastic. Uh, configure. I don't want to configure. New rewrite options. And we can say app.redirect. Fantastic. That's exactly what I want to do. Actually, I could do a rewrite, couldn't I? Hmm. Let's try this. See if we can get this to to force the issue. Right? What do you think? Chat room, tell me I'm not completely off my rocker. Too late. Um because I need to do that reroute before this. So I'm gonna do it way up here. Right, something like that. Control dot on this, get my using statement. All right, so my redirect rule is going to be if they're going to um, identity, uh, right, was it like, what was the URL that it was trying to go to? Rats, I should have copied it. Is it over here? It might be over here. Mm, there it is. Identity account framework. Identity account manage underscore framework and underscore blazer. Let's rewrite both of those. Yeah. Right? Something that looks like that. Actually, I could just do this. Right? And reroute it to... Right, reroute it to that. What do you think? Where we're going? We don't need rockers. Rockers? Um, and the last piece of this to get it to actually do it is to say app use rewriter. All right, let's give this a shot. So right here, I'm going to say app dot use rewriter, and we're going to pass in the options. Make it look better. Tab that in. I think we got it. I think we got it. Let's see if it hits. Um, Adrian will be disappointed with where we're going. Sorry. The Philly airport has wonderful rockers. It's also got uh, a Lego Liberty Bell in the Philadelphia airport. That's kind of cool. And it's got some great cheesesteaks. If you come to the Philly airport, make sure you go to Chickies and Pete's Sports Bar in there. They've got this amazing side dish called uh, Crab Fries, which is basically French fries with a, a Old Bay-like topping on it. And it's tremendous. No. Method 405. Method not allowed. Look at that. Ooh, I broke that good. Um, do, 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 do. So now I've I've mm, why isn't it? Hmm. What happened there? This page isn't working right now. HTTP. What's a four hundred five? Someone said Ronkerst. Nah, but welcome Ronkerst. Um. What's HTTP 405? When an HTTP method is not allowed by a web server for a requested URL, this condition is seen when a particular handler has been defined for a specific web when that handler is overriding. <laughs> Alright, fine. So it's giving me 405 trying to request it. Putting when you should be getting, getting when you should be putting. It's a method not allowed. Alright, alright. I feel like I'm really fighting the framework here. Um, hmm. Hmm. All right. I hate to say it, but I think I need to throw it in on this. I think I do. And just make that available availability page just a regular page. Oh God, I'm sorry, it didn't work. What am I gonna do? We're gonna have to go in another direction. 
It's not going to do the thing I wanted it to. And you blew it! Yeah, I know. <laughs> Shut up! Yeah. Well, this isn't identity. This is... I want to make this page server-side. Server-side blazer. And it won't do it. It just will not do it. Thank you for the follow. Is that Tom... Is that Tom... Wow, is that supposed to be Tom... Tomatoes? To me, Matas? Let me know. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, yeah, this, so this didn't work. Yank that. Like, the, the ASP.NET Core stuff is properly outside of. Now, I was going for a server-side Blazor app. Even then, it's outside the application, the, the, the component workflow. So we have to reroute. We have to carry that information around back and forth to the Blazor pages. And I was trying to make the inside of... Where is it? The inside of this availability page. I was trying to make Blazor. And it will not do it. So, what I think we need to do then... Like, I could make a whole folder blazer, but I can't make just one page inside the folder blazer is what I'm seeing, right? If I look at this. Right, this is telling me that, yeah. If you go to a page that doesn't exist, it's gonna route you to the index HTML which gives you this, which then turns everything into, into mush. Um, bummer. All right. Oh, gosh. Hmm. That would have been fun. I got the user identity passed through, but that was about it. Bummer. Let's close that file, that, that window that I had open. Um, oh, I don't want to completely roll this back. What if I took availability? All right, let's think out loud here. Dinner time for Code Stencil. Have a good one. Uh, well, authentication is implemented. Actually, it's just not in Blazor yet. What we did, um, and you can take a look at the source code, it's out there in the repository. Um, the authentication is being passed in by receiving a user manager. And the user that's being passed in, um, we're receiving that information. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, well, we can't get it there. So there's a couple things happening there. Server-side Blazor app I thought was just a Razor page with a weight and framework Blazor. Well, that's where it starts. So, yeah, you can inject this stuff and it'll pass it around. And we did that a bit with the other app we were working on previously. Uh, but you can do that as a component. Yes, this isn't a component. This is still a page. And I think that's where I've got a misunderstanding here. Let's yank this. What if we put availability, my availability, as a different section of the website? So we've got login already happening, and it happens over here. And if we make that completely offline, uh, completely post back, all that stuff, right? then I, I'm going to delete availability. I don't think I mean, there's nothing built in here yet, so I'm okay with yanking that. Um, I'm going to come down here to startup. 
Map fallback to area page. No. I'm going to change this. This should be map fallback to page. Uh, add blazer to an existing application. No, that's not it. That's not it either. It's in the docs. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Change this to three. Tutorials, web apps, web API. If I go to web apps, Blazor. Let's try this again. Uh, components. Integrate components into Razor pages. Blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> Darn it, where's that startup? There's a thing where it shows you what's in startup. Use components, component parameters, route to components. I don't see the startup. Hmm. The hosting models, show me some code. Show me the code. Show me the code. Show me the code. Um, don't see it. All right. Endpoints, map blazer hub, map fallback to page. Is it just host? All right, we'll do that. So host CSHTML. Right, and if I go back over to this integrate into your existing page. Where'd it go? Right, to render a component from a page review, use the render component async HTML helper method. Mm-hmm. So if I end up, right, we've got a components and availability.razor. This is the availability component. So if I put on the index page, right, and this is just availability, my user ID is this. If I go to the index page, um, welcome, learn about, no. Um, enter your availability. Right, and I want to make that an anchor. And I'm going to go to slash, let's see if we can get it to trigger this. Right. Page is that. Right, I want it to go there. And hopefully it picks up and says, oh, that's a Razor page, and tries to load that. Binary Chef, hello, hello, welcome. Um, and I'm hitting right at the end of my time. Part of me thinks I should retrace my steps reach out to some of the blazer folks and see what we can do to integrate this a little bit cleaner because i feel like i'm throwing spitballs at this point and nothing's sticking enter your availability seeing nothing nothing happened ooh ooh ooh, ooh. ooh. okay hang on normalizing blazer to websocket connected to using hub protocol blazer pack that doesn't sound creepy at all. Blazer pack. All right. Um, but nothing loaded. Uh, we're getting somewhere. All right. So look, a lot of WebSocket traffic back and forth. Interesting. Right? If I... No. Stop it. So the messages are coming back and forth. Localhost availability, zero. And nothing came back for the availability page. 
which should have been here. Uh, what do you mean it can't be found? It's a component. Um, what happens if I just delete all that? Right, let's just get it working. If the JavaScript and the pass were there, you'd think it rendered, still be needed so it knows where to render it. Yeah, it should. Right, I just want to get it, I want to see this H5 up here. Right, show me that that thing's a, a, a thing. No. Now, I'm wondering, make it work, make it good. Right? Render component async is the marker for the JavaScript to know placement. Right, that's uh, da, 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 here. So I haven't, I don't have it in this page. Right. Div ID equals this, render component async that. Um, so do we put a page out here? Hang on, let's do this. Add Yoda. So if I do this, add razor page. Yep, just a razor page. And we call it availability, right? So you need an empty razor app and then the router is registered. Y yes, okay. Router app assembly. Um, I'm not seeing that in this. Right, I'm seeing render component async and forcing it over there. Right, so there's page model. So if I make this, let me rename this. Right. Uh, doesn't know what that is. Okay. Right. If I'm emulating this, I'm going to say div id equals availability. Await HTML. Render component async. Availability that was completely uncalled for, but hey, whatever. Let's see if that works now. If I'm trying to do it with a path, I need a router and an app bootstrap. Yeah, I think you're right there, but it's not clear to me how you put that into an MVC app. Interesting. I'm not seeing the network. I mean, there's the WebSock, it's pushing back. So now I'm inside of here. This is the availability component, right? So I should be able to go say functions and I want to be able to inject Right, and this is what we were doing with the other application. Now I should be able to inject the principle, just like we did over in the pixel bot with with Bobby. Uh, no, wrong one. Thank you. No, no. Mm hmm. I haven't touched that stuff in a while. Um, I need to change branches to this branch. Thank you.
go. Uh, it's inside here. Inside our components. Do we put it in index? There it is, inject security claims. Yep, that one. So I could get the current user. And we also had to bring it. Oh my good lord, Quill Tony! Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my goodness, here they come. 58 viewers over from Quill Tony's channel. Oh my good lord. Thank you so much for the raid. Um, defend the channel. Wait, master. It might be dangerous. Yes. Um, oh my gosh. We're getting, we're getting swamped. Exclamation point defend. Let them know. We're not going to let them. Yeah. My gosh. Wow. Wow. Chat room. 58 folks from over there. Thanks so much for joining us. Raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz and I'm a pirate. We're working on a, uh, we're working on a little application that's going to help us manage um it's going to help us manage the availability and schedule look at that thank you missile vein for all the all the quill tony pets there um that is phenomenal thank you ginger ranners thanks so much for the follow look forward to seeing you in the chat room and robert tables robert tables just resubscribed for nine months gritty very gritty thanks so much for that um, look at all the gritty. Oh. Everybody loves gritty. Um, so we're gonna we're building an application that's gonna allow folks to be able to schedule employees. We were doing some work earlier on Quiltoni's bot that we're scaling up, we're leveling up so that it can manage multiple channels and be very configurable. So we're doing a little bit of both. Um, cool. Tony confirmed that the St. Jude... Oh, Carrie says that the St. Jude logo is on the side flap of the Domino's pizza box. Nice. If you open the Quill Tony page, they shall arrive. Yeah. So great to see you. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, make sure you... Thank you, Carrie, for the, the shout out there. Um, I'm, I have to grab... See, I'm, look at this. I'm going into... Cool Tony's um, bot that we're working on here to steal some code because I wrote it there first and I need to grab uh, not that one not that one not that one Chelsea currently cosplay thanks so much for the follow uh, look forward to seeing the chat room and Chelsea um, you might be interested to know then that I am I am trying to set up for my first cosplay ever for TwitchCon. I want to cosplay as Doctor Strange. And I've got some I've got some friends that are interested in helping me out with that. Um I'm gonna need some help. But I think we can I think we can do it. Because look at this face. It needs help. Um no, I, I look a little bit Doctor Strange hype, absolutely. Look at this. If I didn't look like uh, Jack Sparrow right now, I'd look exactly like. Right here, let's do this. Let's get it a little bit closer. Do this. Right, look at that. I look just like. Yeah. Me and Doctor Strange. Two sides of the same coin. Thank you, Chelsea. Yeah, it's going to be my first cosplay ever. I'm excited to, to do it. I, I, was, I was never one for wearing costumes until I actually got into into co a costume for Halloween um, and then it was like okay this is this is kind of cool so I'm gonna I'm gonna bite the bullet I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go for it I'm gonna cosplay at TwitchCon it's not available everywhere oh it's not uh, you can get the pasta in it here when I've done the pasta ah oh, okay so um, I'm trying to get the availability for this. I should now be able to say at, I should be able to say current user. And this is a templating language called Razor. I can reach into my code um, from HTML by starting it with an at sign here. So I can say current user and I should be able to get like the current user's name like that. Um, let's see if that works. 
Red Bulls. Oh. Have I been to TwitchCon before? Chelsea, TwitchCon last year was my first one ever. And and here you go. Can I can I tell can I tell a uh, can I tell a story? Is Quill Tony still here? Can I embarrass her for just a second? Can I embarrass myself for just a second? Um So last year was my first TwitchCon, and I was so excited to go. Um, and I landed and I was I was expecting to meet all kinds of creative folks and and software development folks there. And uh the, the first person I met, Cole, Tony and I landed at about the same time, um, but she was over at one terminal and I was over at another terminal. And I was like, I got to meet somebody from Twitch. It's 11 o'clock at night. And I wandered over to the other terminal just so I could say hello. And I ran into uh, Capes and Arrows and Quill Tony. And they were the first people that I met uh, who were other Twitch broadcasters at TwitchCon. And uh, um, she really, Tony really helped set the tone for the weekend for me. It was so welcoming, so friendly, and uh, it's it's hospitality, it's friendship that I will never forget, and I, I can't thank her enough for her because it really got me into this community in a big way and got me so excited about it. So, uh, yeah, and I met Malfunct there as well. Yes, in the creative suite. It was tremendous. So, um, oh, uh, thank you. Thank you for the, the go-ahead sigh. Look at that. I drink... And I know things. And I, I drank a lot, and I got to know a lot of things and a lot of people that evening. I did. I did. And when when folks like Malfunct and I get together who are so technical, uh, you're going to tell the story that I thought it was weird at first. You went to the different terminal just to say hi. No, it wasn't weird at all. But when you get technical folks together, we, we do say, Chelsea, we do say a number of acronyms, and it sounds like this. Seeing as how the VP is such a VIP, shouldn't we keep the PC on the QT? Because if it leaks to the VC, you can end up in MIA, and then we'd all be put on KP. I hope you're not as confused as I am. What's that? It was a lot of acronyms there, Jack. What's that? And, and, and we tried to follow along there, okay? So, um, moving on. It works. It's so... Right, this is a Blazor component. This is all happening server side, and it did get the current user's information and spit it out here. That's tremendous. That's progress. You feel slightly bad for the non technical creative folks that live through those conversations. It's okay. We left and it was awesome. Yes, Cool Tony, it was tremendously awesome. We need to get Carrie to TwitchCon this year. We got to do what we can to get, to get Carrie there. Um, I'm going to see Carrie next week, and I think we should do a stream together when we're in Orlando. I think that'll be awesome. So awesome. So, so awesome. Uh, all right. So if that's returning, maybe, maybe, can we, can we do this? Can we inject and get... So inject, see this inject? This is called a directive up here. And it's a way for us to say, I want an object of this type. And I'm going to call it this variable name. And I can start referencing it just like I did here. I said, current user, give me that user's identity. And we're going to look for their name. And you saw we output it right there. So what I'm going to do is I want to see if I can inject the data type that I'm looking for, my DB context. Let's see if I can get that to... To pop up here so if I say data dot no uh, no it's not there right my DB context it's, it's this guy right here right don't I don't I have that should be oh it's in a different it's in a different namespace all right let's change that real quick make that data so it's so it's congruent so it lines up so if I say data dot there it is my DB context okay so now if I call that Con let's call that db context maybe we can get it to query things uh there we go all right so uh right if i do something here uh going to lurk need to take some cold medicine oh i hope you feel better quill tony good she was uh, working and, and on stream tonight uh even while she was sick and then sewing things together playing games with with chat over uh, uh, the Amazon I want to make sure I say the name right the Amazon Echo not that Alexa person and then, um, and then they raided us and then, she's going to go get some cold medicine so you got it 
it's very quirky, but it works ish. Oh, cool! Electric Havoc! Nice. Carrie Payette will have a suitcase full of Raspberry Pis, wires, ICs, breadboards. TSA is going to hate you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, all right, let's put together a method here to, uh, let's, let's call this, uh, get, uh, get my availability. I, I don't know. It's going to do a thing, right? So I should be able to say DB context. So I'm going to reference my database context and I should be able to now, yes, look at that. I can get to my people. I can get to my schedules. So I need to get my person record for this user. I need to figure out how to do that. Right? I need to get the person. Um, yeah. No. P dot, can I say user ID? Isn't user ID in here? No. I put a person, oh no, I put a person ID on the user object, on the my user object. Here. There it is. So I need to get that person ID somehow. All right, I've got to load that. You're just gonna ask for a secondary inspection. Yeah, right? My gosh. With all that stuff, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's bad enough. You should see how you should see how TSA looks at me when I have a stream deck in my in my suitcase, right? Here. One of these things. They're like, what is that? It's a stream deck. What's a stream deck? It helps me make uh, things. Is the person wired to the identity user? No. So we're going to need to figure that out. We need to kind of connect the dots there. Um, and if you're not a person yet, we need to make you a person. Ooh, boy. We've gotten somewhere pretty good here. Right? Let me comment this out for right now. Uh, if I just say total persons, right, I should be able to, just to make sure that I am getting the database context, I should be able to just do that. DB context. Why didn't you give me a dot there? And I should be able to get that information right there. Fallback page was just the Razor index page. Nothing fancy in C-sharp. Ah, in startup. Uh, no. What did I do? Holy. Wow. Wow. Because I changed the... Because I changed it. Uh-huh. Because I changed that from models. Bummer. Okay. So let's do this. Um, I'll make that happen. I'll come back over here. We'll just add that like so. And boom goes the dynamite. It got mad. I know, Miss Vane, right? Uh, nope. I broke it again. Uh, da -da -da, da -da. Right. So it's not there. It's like that. Come on. You know it's there. Right? Turn blue. It must be there. You found it. You know what it is. You turkey. I got you to work anyway. Ha <laughs> ha! All right. Let's go. Can you add an email to person, then use the username as the email, and then retrieve it with it? That's not a bad idea, Ancient Coder. That's not bad. But I have the person ID over there. I'd like to be able to use that. So I'm going to click login, get that to work so that I'm logged in because availability doesn't prevent me from going there if I'm not logged in yet. Because um, I don't have that kind of authorized thing hooked up. Uh, yeah, fine. Total person zero. Fine, it found it. It executed my database code. Good. I think we're really somewhere now. We fought with Blazor a bit there, but we got it working. Um, so now the next piece is when you register, I should create a person record and attach the two. It did a thing. I know, Robert Tables. It did a thing. 
there it was. Um, if I go back to registration, areas, identity, register, there it is. So when you do the post here, post is when you send the data back to the website. Here it is on post. It creates a new user and adds them to the database, right? See, new my user. I feel like we should create a new person and add them. But if I create a person, then I also need to create a schedule and I need to hook all that stuff back up to the user and the user their username is the same as their email by default here. So we've got a little bit of work to do to clean this up. And then I've, and, and then, oh, I did it again. Someone and then me there in chat. Go ahead, exclamation point, and then. Can a person have a null schedule? No. A person has a schedule, right? That's defined down here in our domain. Go ahead, someone and then. Why didn't it end then? Did I break it again? Did I break it? Um, or, or do I need to refresh it? Good, okay, try the end then again. And then? There it is. Thank you. Uh, yes. And you blow it! I did. Right? Try a different and then number. And then. There it is. Alright. Um, so, we need to expand this. And the question that Robert Tables asked was, well, does a person and have then. to have a schedule? Well, I think they do, right? Person down here, foreign keys. They do have to have a schedule ID. So we need to create their schedule first. Add it to a person. Add the person to the user. Do, 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 do. I think we can do that real quick. Right? So let's create person. And that's going to return a person ID. Thank you for the follow, Ventic97. I appreciate it. And look forward to seeing you in the chat room. So here's the user. The person isn't going to have a name just yet. We're going to need to work on that part too. Um, and we're going to put a person ID equals person ID. Um, yeah. And at login, we should probably store that person ID as a claim. Robert Tables. Not today, quiet. Yeah, thank you so much. Ooh, Electric Havoc. Um, let me... Do me, Can you DM me that gist, please? So I can take a look at it later? Um, so I'd love to have this pop out as a claim when you log in. So when you log in, input model on get, uh, external logins on post. Here it is. Password sign in async right there. So if succeeded, user logged in, but I want to add that claim. How do I add that claim coming out? You know what I mean? Discord. Uh, yes, a whisper. Yes. Or you can actually you can post it in the Discord right in the general page if you'd like. Uh, the general channel. So that's. Um, I'm not going to get into that for right now. Let me just get this working. So I want to create a person. I'm going to generate a method to create a person. That sounds weird. Generate a method to create a person. Um, let's put in here my DB context. Stop it. Thank you. Uh, let's just call this DB context. And it needs a control dot. So we get the using statement. DB context equals DB context. Um, 
and we need to make that a thing. All right. So I generated that, so it's a field, it's available, so I can reference it. Um, so create person is now a thing. Here it is down here. We're going to return an int for that person's ID. So we're going to create a person. Uh, var p equals new person. Um, var s equals new schedule. Look at that. Uh, p dot I can't say p schedule ID. I want to say p dot schedule equals why isn't it see it's got this weird with the indenting here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return p dot ID even though it's not assigned yet watch it will be. Um, so if I do db context dot I need to add the schedule first. Schedules add S, right? Um, I need to flush it first, don't I? Hmm. Uh, yep, I need to update uh, that object. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right, it's commit. Right, commit async. Where is it? Schedules. Oh my gosh. Where's the commit? It's not flush, no. Right? No. What? Save save changes? Ugh. Thank you. So now that schedule has an ID hooked up to it. Um, so I should be able now to say p dot schedule ID equals s dot ID. Uh, db context dot persons add that new person and we'll figure out all the information about that new person later save changes that's very chatty there's a way to do that all in one step but I'm not gonna do it just yet and we'll return that person's ID which will come out here and we'll add it into the thing there and if we did everything right it should just work all right loading Loading. And then. Where is it? Right? Make it work, then make it good. Exactly. We're going to get this working, and we'll optimize that. It sh you should be able to do it all in one shot. I want to call this uh, Jeff2 with the same password, which is this. Come on. Work. Work, darn you. See that I didn't swear, Junie. All right, so now I have Jeff2 at Jeffrey Fritz. So I go to this page, and there is a person. Ha <laughs> ha! There is a way to do it all in one step. You're right, Ancient Coder. What I should be able to do, and I don't have the navigation property built. Right, so here I'm inside of person. Um, I didn't set the person type either. Um, what I sh should be able to do is have public schedule schedule something like this and be able to say uh, foreign key right control dot uh, no 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 uh, it was foreign key constraint right install package oh my gosh are you are you kidding well, hang on what the heck I should be able to do that mm. Mm. 
Mm. What happened here? <sighs> sure. I feel like that's the wrong thing to do, but... Uh, no. No. That's not what I want. Uh-uh. That's not it. I need to set up that foreign key constraint. And now I've got this reference that I don't want. Right, because I'm setting up a navigation property. Entity, framework, uh, foreign key. No, that's entity framework seven, uh, six. Foreign key attribute. Uh, go away. Yeah, I should be able to say foreign key and the name of the foreign key is the appropriate other thing. Has foreign key method is also used. Yeah, that's what I thought. Foreign key, just like that. Foreign key schedule ID, like that. And that should work, and it's not going to work. Boom. Oh, are you kidding? All right, hang on. Get rid of this thing first. Right, that's still not working. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's EF6. I think I need to do it in the configuration, don't I? Yeah, foreign key, it's not schedule ID. And it, it isn't creating the, for, the foreign key reference. Um, but I'm trying to create that navigation. So there's person, person ID. So if I say, um, <laughs> model builder dot entity person has, it's not there either. For cockroach DB inter. No, foreign key isn't there. Has one. Ugh. And the navigation name is schedule. Um, I don't think it's going to require me to rebuild. Uh, let's give it a shot. Let's go back to here. Wow. Uh, no, yep, the domain. That's the one I want. .NET EF migrations add. Uh, let's call this schedule foreign key. See if it creates something for us. I should actually come on. That's better. Uh, targets.net standard. There is no runtime associated with the framework, and projects targeting it cannot be. Oh, fine. Uh, so we're going to go to Fritz Resource Management Web. Try that same command again. Because the uh, migrations are actually sitting in the web project. Because that's .NET Core. Not .NET Standard, as this is pointing out. You can't do .NET Standard and use Entity Framework with it. Come on. It'll make you feel good. Uh, i got to specify the DB context. My DB context. Try it again. Come on. Do it. Okay. So .NET EF database database update context my DB context, and we should get that applied. I want to take a look at what that migration is that it wrote. The migration is, of course. The file that it wrote that says, here's how to update the database. 
th it didn't create one. Fantastic. So it shouldn't have updated anything. No, it did write one. Look, there's two additional files. Yeah, it, there's not another file there. Applied migration, schedule foreign key. It's not here. Where'd it go? You make me sad. Um, but it applied it. I'd love to be able to open that. It's, it's not here. Where the heck did it pull that from? There it is, migrations. It's under resource management web. Oh, it put it here. All right, fine. Um, and there's the foreign key reference. All right. So if I wanted to do this all in one, all in one move, what I should be able to do, where'd it go on the register page? Right, close everything else but this. What I should be able to do down here, create the person, create the schedule, schedules, add that, um, do that. I should be able to say, um, what, well, <laughs> check this out. Um, I should be able to say uh, p dot schedule e equals new schedule, and I should then be able to just do that and this, and that should be a thing. Everyone is worried about my DB. Nobody asks about their DB, right? Right. So that should work as well. Let's give that a shot. And if that works, I'm going to call it a night because we're going to be back at this again in about 12 hours. And we're going to write more code. And everybody likes to write more code. Know what I mean? Right? And I won't have a stupid pirate hat on. Junie. Uh, so we're going to call this Jeff 3, which is my wife's worst nightmare. First there were two of me, now there's three of me. <laughs> you didn't do it. No, you didn't. She's sitting there with that MP3 of my, uh, of me swearing like uh, like Gollum holding the the ring of power. My precious, I've got Fritz swearing. <laughs> two persons total. Fantastic. So it found it. We can see it, and if I do. We could look at... I don't want to even look at the table. I'm I'm pretty happy that that works. So, I'm going to call it a night right there because that was a lot. Let's um, go up one. Let's add all the things. Let's commit. Let's uh, stop the music. Let's go over to Mario Music. There we go. Because I'm going to clean up. I'm going to save off. Um, finished registration and now loading user information in our availability component. So it took us a little bit to get here, but I'm actually pretty happy with the outcome. We've got our availability component working in a way that it now can read user information. It can read from the database using Blazor technology, using C Sharp that could be lifted and shifted and run on the client side. But right now it's gonna run on the server. So I'm feeling pretty good about where this is right now. And it sets us up so that next time we can build out our user interface to um, allow us to both view our schedule and edit our schedule, our availability, so that other folks can see what's going on and um, take a look at our at our code, at our schedule here. And then, oh, I did end then again. They'll be able to actually start mapping between the two, and that will be tremendous. Um, <laughs> you know what? I think... 
Let's see. Who's uh, is uh You know what? Our friend Kim Philpotts has a couple people and it, Kim is working on Xamarin Forms right now. Kim's another member of the Live Coders team. Let's raid our friend Kim Philpotts. There's the raid command. Let's set up the raid for Kim Philpotts. Make sure I spell that right because uh two L's, two T's. Yes. I think we got that right. If you're uh, if you're a subscriber, oops, spelled it wrong. Yeah, the important thing, I forgot the Y. The M, I'm sorry. P H I No, no, no. Slash raid. K Y M P H I L L P O T T S. There we go. If you're a subscriber, uh, grab that first line of text. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Grab the second line of text. We're going to announce our presence when we uh, visit with our friend Kim, and we're going to let him know that we're there and we support him. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. I know a bunch of you are out there in Europe, and it's really late at night. I really appreciate you joining me. I'll be back again tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, 1400 UTC. But for now, all my code's committed. It's out there on GitHub if you need to check it out. It's there for you. This video, just like all my other videos, it'll be available here on Twitch for a couple days, and we'll archive it over to YouTube. Say hi to Kim for me, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everyone.